Our law and justice story tonight. Yesterday, former lawyer for President Trump, Michael Cohen, was sentenced to three years in prison for tax fraud, lying, and campaign finance law violations. This morning, President Trump tweeted a lengthy response to the news, writing, quote, I never directed Michael Cohen to break the law. He was a lawyer, and he's supposed to know the law. It's called advice of counsel, and a lawyer has great liability if a mistake is made. That's why they get paid. Despite that many campaign finance lawyers have strongly stated that I did nothing wrong with respect to campaign finance laws, if they even apply, because this was not campaign finance, Cohen was guilty on many charges unrelated to me. But he pled to two campaign charges which were not criminal, and of which he probably was not guilty even on a civil basis. Those charges were just agreed to by him in order to embarrass the president and get a much reduced prison sentence, which he did, including the fact that his family was temporarily let off the hook. As a lawyer, Michael has great liability to me. With me now to break this down, member of the, tr the Trump 2020 Advisory Board, Steve Rogers. Steve, good to see you. Oh, good to see you. Thank you. All right, Steve, Hans von Spakovsky from the Heritage Foundation, he's an expert on campaign finance law and, of course, violations of that law. He contends that what Michael Cohen did, just in regard to campaign finance, not the tax fraud and the lying, but just in regard to campaign finance, was not actually a violation of the law, and neither uh, is it a violation of the law what President Trump did, even if President Trump not only knew about it, but directed it. Do you agree? I agree 100%. Look, uh, to begin with, Michael Cohen forgot that in the vocabulary are the words uh, accountability and personal responsibility. So whether he did or did it, uh, the fact of the matter is President Trump has absolutely nothing to do with this. That's number one. Number two, back in 2008, Senator John Edwards ran for the Democratic nomination for president. John Edwards was charged with pretty much the same thing they charged Michael Cohen with. It went to court and it was thrown out of court. Why? Because there were no violations of the federal finance law. So there's been a precedent already set. What Michael Cohen did was try to get himself out of a jam by lying to the investigators. Now he's got himself in more hot water. And ironically, he may have pleaded guilty to a crime that doesn't exist. Right. Well, that's certainly what it seems. If you break if you break this down, if you break down whether it was a an in-kind contribution or whether they failed to report it thus making it a violation of campaign finance law, it doesn't it doesn't seem that it it matches up with the elements of that uh, of that particular crime. So the U.S. attorney that's prosecuting this, who's asserting that these were illegal corporate contributions to the Trump campaign, he says that's because they were made with, quote, the intent to influence the 2016 presidential election. But that in and of itself is not enough if you look at federal code. If you look at uh, the federal election committee or federal election uh, laws here, it says specifically that campaign-related expenses do not include any expenditures used to fulfill any commitment, obligation, or expense of a person that would exist irrespective of the candidate's election campaign. I think it would be naive of us to think that President Trump's, uh, what, President Trump hadn't engaged in hush money payments for reasons, maybe affairs, maybe other reasons before in his life because of his stature and his powerful positions. Look, as Rudy Giuliani said some time ago, there's something called nuisance settlements goes on all the time with celebrities. President Trump was a celebrity well before he was running for the president of the United States. And it is routine business for a lot of these celebrities to settle these matters out of court with financial settlements. So there's nothing uh, wrong with what was done. These were business transactions. And this is the continuing witch hunt of uh, Robert Mueller. Boy, I'll tell you, that guy's on a fishing expedition. He's trying to catch a big fish, but he's never going to catch a big fish because the president of the United States did nothing wrong. Well, I think there's a difference between something being wrong and something be being illegal. I don't think there are too many people across the country who would argue that paying hush money uh, to people that you've had an affair with is a, is a morally correct thing to do. It's not. But that's a different question than whether it's a legal or an illegal thing to do. And it seems that precedent and law both say that it is not an illegal thing to do. So I would agree with you in that sense about a fishing expedition and a witch hunt, too. The other, the other element of this is if... If what uh, Robert Mueller's, Robert Mueller and New York, the Southern District of New York prosecutors are arguing is true, that this is a violation of campaign finance law to engage in paying off people to be quiet so as not to, uh, not to damage your reputation, if that is a violation of campaign finance laws, and there are many, many, many members of Congress who are also guilty of this. 
And keep in mind, the uh, federal uh, uh, campaign finance law organization would already be involved in this, uh, uh, investigating as to whether there was, in fact, a federal finance law uh, violated. And you're absolutely right. They better check every single member of the United States Congress and Senate. The fact of the matter is Michael Cohen got into trouble. He tried to blame President Trump. He is responsible for his actions. Michael Cohen has to man up. He's accountable and responsible for his actions, not the president of the United States. Right. And like Trump or dislike Trump, you got to look at the law when you're coming after someone or when someone's being targeted. You must look at the law and treat people equally or else our system of justice is not a system of justice. It is injustice. Steve, thanks for being on the show. I appreciate it. On that note, we're going to turn to another story, our underreported story.